Hi everyone, and welcome to the Sierra College Physics Department lab setup for Ohm's Law and Electrical Resistance. As part of your lab kit, you'll see many items in front of you, including the Tech Power D6 or DT9923B multimeter and the IEC 61010 1 multimeter. You're going to need both meters to do all three parts of this, this experiment. Please make sure to see what parts you are assigned based on your class. We have the Solbay power supply, which we're going to need to put together for use of the breadboard. There is a small little key that goes with the power supply to change the voltage. We'll be using the prongs to set up for different current and voltage solutions. Use your resistor color guide, which you printed out, small wires, an assortment of resistors and a diode, and a 1K uh, ohm resistor that's a variable resistance, and your light bulb. So for part one, we'll set a few of these things aside. Use your resistor color guide to pick the appropriate resistor. And then we need to make our power supply. To do that, we'll use the end that has two screw terminals. Let's open our wires and grab the black one and a red one. We'll use those for ground and voltage. Note on this screw terminal there is a plus and a minus. So please take any screwdriver that you have at home that will fit into this terminal and we're going to add the black. So we put it in and we'll screw that down. goes in the end. We'll screw that down. We'll then take the red into the positive terminal and screw that down. And this gets plugged into the end of our power supply here. So our power supply, which is a sole base supply, is a variable supply. It can go 3 volts all the way up to 12 volts. 3, 4.5, 5, 6, 7.5, 9, and 12. Those are the variations we're going to be using in this, in this experiment. So. People should know how to use the breadboard by now. So I'm going to make a positive rail and a ground rail. And now from there, we need to attach a meter, one in series, and one in parallel. To help to make the connections, the multimeter, you can take a separate piece of wire and we're going to twist that around the lead as such. I'm going to connect that to ground, this one to one side of the resistor, use a small piece of red wire to the other side of the resistor. and that to the positive rail. So as we see, if we follow the red, we go through the resistor, through the multimeter, out of the multimeter, and to ground. So we've made a series connection to measure current. I could take my other leads, com, and voltage, and we will use these leads as a probe 
to probe for the voltage. So when we take our measurements, you can measure on each side of the resistor and that'll give you the resist the voltage going through the resistor. So set this multimeter in the milliamp range. Adjust your power supply to three volts, and you will see that I'm getting 21.17 milliamps. So now I need to know what voltage this is at. I will go to the 20 volts range, and we are going to probe each side of the resistor. Make sure the hold button is not on. If you get in a negative value, just flip your leads and take your measurements. I have 3.06 volts and 20.95, 20.86 milliamps. Once that measurement has been done, You will take out your power supply, use that little key, and change it to the next voltage. Plug it in. Measure the current, measure the voltage, and you will do that for the range of the power supply. For your next setup, you're going to be doing the exact same thing, except in this case, you will use your wires and tie it to this light bulb. And this light bulb is what we're going to be using as the resistor. So now you can keep the exact same setup, but we're going to remove this resistor and we'll use our wire, our extra wire, and we'll twist that around. the lead. Make sure to get a good connection here. extremely short amount of time that we had to put these lab kits together. This was by far the quickest solution that we had. So now that I've replaced that resistor with this light bulb, for the light bulb you will need to use the 10 amp setting. This at the highest range, this will have much, much more than the 200 milliamps going through it. Make sure to note the amperage setting goes to the correct port. Make the exact same measurements for current and voltage through the entire range. The last setup you'll be doing, use the breadboard, resistor of the appropriate size, a diode, and your trim pot. So I'm going to set this up. So out of my positive voltage, I'm going to put a resistor. Next I will put the trim pot. The top side, we'll flip it around, we'll do the top side to the resistor. The middle will go to another port and the, re and the 
breadboard and the bottom I'll put in the intermediate and the breadboard. We'll make a connection to measure current. So using the same setup we just had for current, this will go to the middle connection. jump to the other side of the board and now we'll put the diode the diode has a silver line and that will put facing down we will add that to the board also we'll make a connection from the bottom of the diode to the bottom of the trim pot and we'll finish our connection with the bottom of the trim pot to that ground rail. We will also need to take voltage measurements across the diode. So you will set this to a constant voltage of 12 volts on the power supply. So again, using that key, go ahead and move that voltage up to 12 volts. So for this second setup, we're going to be using the small multimeter to take current measurements as it has a much more sensitive range. And will use the large multimeter to take voltage measurements across the diode. You will see that my current changes depending on the trim pot. So go ahead and take voltage measurements and current measurements across the apparatus. To do part two, we will simply keep the same setup, but we are now going to flip where we plugged in our voltage supply and now do the reverse bias.